at those kids at, at all. They're trafficking little babies, bro. I mean, that's what's going on, bro. And there's, that you can't go find them. Um, so what you just said, but imagine with the sex work, forget like going to rob people. They're doing that on their own. But I'm a grown man, right? Like I'm a little hefty, I'm a little big around the tummy, but I'm a grown dude. I could go grab 10, 15, uh, 13 year old girls. And now I have my own brothel, bro. They can't find these little girls. those kids aren't documented. So they, that's they what can just pay for them. Yeah, because they don't have no bio data. Yeah. They show up to these addresses and they're not there. Wow. You know what? I got to come forward. Like, what did you see on the border that made you say? I mean, I know you said it was a bunch of different things, but what would just you say the, maybe the, the top two or three? Time. Um, well, it, it, the first thing that happened was when it when I, you know, all right. So to go real deep into it, it didn't start in Tucson sector. There was other sectors that were getting smashed. So we were still t t turning people back. But other sectors were getting busy, overran, and they were the ones giving out the files to let people in. So you're seeing this at other sectors. Okay. You see what I'm, so you're hearing through the grapevine that, hey, we're just letting people in. Mm. Down in Eagle Pass. Oh, really? You. You're hearing. Yeah, you're like, dude, yeah. this is not This is weird. Why are they letting all these people in? Wait, yeah. the just whole, letting people in? Well, I think mine would probably be better to explain it. We're, yeah. we're giving them court dates for years in the future that they never show up to, and then ERO doesn't go and remove them afterwards. Yeah. Oh. Pretty much. Okay, let me explain this real fast for the people. So... When you come into the United States, guys, illegally, right, and you run into Border Patrol, what ends up happening is you get apprehended, and then you get taken to a Border Patrol station where you're, where you're processed. And then they create something called an alien file on you, which is when he was mentioning file. That's, that's what he means. You get an alien number. It's a nine-digit number, A-O, whatever the hell it is, and then it's a nine-digit number, and that is going to be your alien registration number, right? And it used to be, right, this is where my mind got blown actually speaking to him. Most of the time there was a policy, and this was under Trump, alien comes in you're getting something called an expedited removal an er okay that means you are getting sent back within two weeks to mexico or wherever the fuck you came from mm. right now they're doing something called which is fucking crazy to me that they're doing this now something called a notice to appear release on recognizance ntaor right this is something that you never do giving someone an ntaor repeat that so they can hear that because yeah. this is big like yeah. they never I, I wasn't in at this time but they would never do this so one more time so when illegal aliens come in they get apprehended under the trump administration they'll get something called an expedited removal kicked out immediately within two weeks they have yeah. to do it within two weeks and where they go in to just give themselves up they were trying to cross too yeah. they so were trying to cross and they were kicking them yeah so yeah. they would kick they would kick them right right now they're not giving them expedited removals they're giving them notice to appears released on own recognizance which means they get apprehended by border you're patrol. Technically encountered. Yes, you're, you've been encountered by the border patrol. You get but an they, alien number, and then they basically get, have you sign some documents and let you go. We just take your word that you're going to be at X Y Z Street in this city. You're just going to be there. Wait, 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 wait. She's telling me you don't know this, Walter. No, <laughs> people bro, don't know this. No, stuff? the American I'm public doesn't know. Islands, bro. Nah, you pick a coconut and you, shit. That's no, fine. I know, I know. No, I know. But, but I'm serious. I yeah. no, everyone knew so this. You're telling me yeah. I can come by the border, get caught. Get release and then go about my. my well, not way. only that, they showing up with neck pillows. They're looking at me like, I want you to work faster so I can go to my spot because they know. They show up what? with neck pillows like we're Uber. Who, who mandated this to happen? Who, who I'm not here to, uh, to say about political I could talk about that. I, I could talk about political. that. So, um, and, and I, I don't want to really stress this to the American p public. An NTAOR guys, notice to appear, release on own recognizance. When I was an agent, I vividly remember going to Border Patrol stations. A guy would come in and he'd have information, right? One of the illegal aliens, he might come in he's, and he has information on a drug cartel or some shit. I'm like, I want to turn this guy into an informant. I would ask the Border Patrol, can you give him an NTA OR because this guy's good to go. I we I verified his family. I know where he's going to be, et cetera. Can you guys NTA OR him for me? He's going to be, he's going to work for me. They will literally look me in the eye and say, no, mm. we don't do NTA ORs. And I was like, okay. So I would have to take the guy. I give him an NTA OR on my, on my own because as HSI, we have... Uh, we have immigration authority, so I'd have to do it myself. It's a pain in the ass. It's a lot of paperwork, but I'll do it myself. But now, mm -hmm. which is crazy to me that he's telling me this, they're giving everyone NTAORs. You don't give NTAORs to aliens because they give you a bullshit address. They might not be there. Yeah, and they're with and they're not going to show up with the judge. And they're with kids, and we don't. And this is another thing. They're with children. This is with the trafficking piece. And I don't want to cut you off. So no, no, I, no, no, I'm done. No, I'm done. I, I just, I just really had to drive home yeah. to them. How this is not normal at all. Oh, yeah, and I'm not on a talk show, so I'll probably cut you off and look stupid or whatever. Go, go so. for it. Go for it. They're with kids, right? So you show up with kids. We're not taking the biographical data of the children under 14, no picture, no fingerprint, bro. No one knows that. 
Wait, oh it, shit! We can't find these. We don't take. Everyone else gets a mouth swab, a picture, an iris scan. We're taking severe data. Like we're finding out. Like we we get the data on you. We're still letting you go. Children, we're not fingerprinting. They might not have documents, or they might have fake documents. Holy shit! So you could be from whatever country. Go to the border with a little girl, that's mm -hmm. not your daughter, and you guys get sent to the same address. No way. And we don't have nothing on that girl. There's no bio data. I, you can you can't even take a picture. Holy shit. Under fourteen. Wow. Yeah. No. That's why this needed to be spoken about. People think I'm. You know. It's like no. Something has to be done. Once again, no biographical data under kids under fourteen. That's an NTAOR, right? Now. At being border patrol, it's strictly a patrol agent. I'm not doing investigations. We have an intel, but it's not investigation. HSI is like serious investigations, bro. Like HSI, you really look into a lot of things. Yeah. So when he has a guy that he wants to NTOR, you know, over four years ago in the past, that's a guy that probably has a tie to a very serious you're criminal organization. You're not giving NTORs out. Like, it's got to be some really so, fucking good. Because you're putting your neck on a line to say, we're letting this guy in to the United States. Because he's connected to X, Y, and Z. He yes. knows, he might be whoever connected, that could really crack a huge case, and we're still, we were still saying no. Right. Yeah, they were telling me no every time. I had to do it myself. But now they're giving it to everybody. I'm fucking shocked. When he told me that, I was like, And I don't want to say currently they're giving it to, but like, because they're getting... E ERs, expedited removal with credible fear, which is someone getting this guy is basically like, we want to remove you, but we're going to hear you out if you have credible fear. And we don't have, and we don't know what happens when an asylum officer hears about the credible fear. They might say it's a credible claim. Okay, so this it's is another process way. Okay, so we went over, j just so the audience understands, there's three main ways that they're processing. So they got caught by Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. There's three main avenues they got processed, guys expedited removal, which they're not really doing anymore. NTAORs, which they're doing a lot, and then this third one you mentioned, which is uh, expedited fear. removal with a credible fear. Can you explain that to the audience what that is? Expedited removal with a credible fear? Yeah. So when he was talking about ERs in the past, that's just like we're, we're basically just getting rid of you. It's going on your record. We're not holding you in prison for what you did because crossing the border is a crime. Yeah. Illegal entry. When we're holding you and we're going to expedite. So when you give, give somebody an ER, they're leaving, right? Like we're just kicking you. You're not mm -hmm. getting held in jail. You're, ER gone. But there's a thing called an ER with cred fear which we're not allowed to decide cred fear or not. So we're holding you in a prison. We're holding you in a jail. It might be like, we might outsource that to like a state prison. Yeah. So we're holding you. We catch you, we're holding you. But now you get a chance with a lawyer that you get for free if you want, or yourself, go talk to an asylum officer. And they decide if you have credible fear. If they say you have credible fear, you're still allowed to stay. What is credible fear? Credible fear. Uh, That's good a question. Thing. Really good question. So credible fear, it's a very ambiguous, I'm glad you asked that. It's, big, it's right? an ambiguous term. Basically, it could be, I can't go back. They're going to kill me. Or I have um, political oh. things. So it's like cl almost claiming asylum. Okay. It's like uh, I have credible fear. And then if it's true, then you get you get asylum. So, That's why you go see an asylum officer. So I could be a killer, be a good actor and say, oh, they're going to do this to me when I go back. Yeah. But you know what? You could. <laughs> you got my back, right, Doc? Yeah. And I stay. You could. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. And that's crazy with the kids. So you're telling me they're not collecting any biometrics on the children. Uh, uh, when I, you say under 14. Which is the ones that you need to be collecting yeah. the data on. So yeah. If this, if I change nothing else, we gotta start taking bio data of children. Because imagine wow. a, a young guy, a kid as a guy, right? Yeah. At fourteen years old or thirteen years old, they probably doing crimes back back home. Yeah. Well, Could I've be. seen in the Could news, be. and I'm pretty sure this is the case. And I saw this. So it looks, you know, I, I don't want to speak out of turn. We don't even have Venezuela's criminal like stuff. We can't even see what if you committed crimes in uh, Venezuela. Yeah. You could be a murderer over there. We don't yeah. and shot for and got out of jail. We don't know. We can't look into that. What about, There's countries that will share their criminal history of individuals. Venezuela will not. What about uh, India? I don't know if they do or not. You have but, to reach out. Uh, you can reach out, but like, yeah, it's. We need like, our streets clean. You know. <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> yeah. I see all those. Yeah, I see the jokes. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. But yeah. Um, I can't take my eye off this kid's wrist. It's like shining. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jesus. so let me. You mind uh, if you float me that for a couple weeks? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I got you, bro. So, so, so they're basically just letting these guys in with an NTOR, uh, which is wild because guys, for an NTOR or, or no, notice to appear, release on own recognizance, that means you're going to see an immigration judge at a later time. All you need to do is give an address. Uh, any address works. We'll take any address. We'll just take your word for it. you. Give the address. So they get arrested, process, then they walk out. I'm um, no, 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 no. They're not walking. We're paying for them to fly somewhere, brother. Wow. Oh, you're, wait, you're paying for their flight too? I'm not paying for your pay. We're all paying for Taxpayers it. Taxpayers are paying. Wow. Yo, wow. Free flights, they get flown out. They get flown out, bro. Anywhere they want to get flown. You didn't know. I can't believe you guys didn't know this. I'm sorry. Like, I, this is so no normal to bro, me. Bro, we're flying people out. Now do you understand why I'm talking about? Now do you understand why I'm saying all this? And we even smashing. 
This guy is crazy. Hold on. <laughs> Can you have a little decorum? For Christ's sake, I'm in a freaking yeah. uniform. Yeah. 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 Fresh, I agree. No. <laughs> Hold on. No, this is this is actually fucking crazy. You've never like, seen the airport videos at Tucson? They just wave. They're not even get, going through, like, the TSA lines all misconstrued. It's like they have their own separate line in the no airport. Way. They're not paying, and then they're getting paid. They're getting the food stamps. They're getting everything the American taxpayer is getting. Wow. In some states, I think they can become cops. I'm like, this guy, I'm waiting for the guy to pull me over. No Put me way. in jail for speeding. They can become cops in some states. I always like, or maybe, um, like, they were trying to talk about them becoming cops. And in California, they were, they, Newsom struck it down. I just saw AB uh, 1840, up to 120 Gs down on a house uh, down payment. Really? He struck it, yeah. Bro, and again, it, when I was in Laredo in... 20 from 2014 to 2018 we were giving everybody expedited removals that means they were coming in border patrol is telling them get the fuck out of here immediately this was under trump they're getting turned away within two weeks because the expedited removal is the best way to process them because it's quick it's a quick file it's easy peasy get them out of there within two weeks it doesn't cost the american it goes on their a record lot. it goes if they get a few of them you can reinstate it you can keep you know if they do it a certain amount of times if somebody we can put them in jail for sex we can penalize them it's it's there you can see it yeah after you, so when you come in illegally the first time, it's something called 1325, 8 U.S.C. 1325, illegal entry. entry. Mm. Then you come in again after you've been deported, like with an ER, they can charge you with 1326, which is a felony reentry, illegal reentry. And we can maybe reinstate the ER or put, or we can charge you with that 1326 and you exactly. can do time over it. Exactly. But the point is, the reason why the ER is so good for the American public and the country. Without the cred fear. Without the cred fear. Because they Thank add you. that in there. Now it's, oh, they get an ER. Yeah. But it's ambiguous. It gets them out of there quickly. It doesn't cost the taxpayer a lot because they're not housing them for long. Typically, they're getting turned back within 24 hours, especially if they're Mexican. Um, <laughs> well, because Mexico's right there. You just give yeah. them to their uh, Cl close to rallies. Yeah. So you just give them to their You're guy. just giving them to their Mexican police like at the border. You transition them over. Okay. So it, it works. It, it's the best for everybody, right? Quickly done. They're still processed. Biometrics are fully there. They're getting out. We're not expending, uh, expending a lot of American dollars. Yeah. Um, but now you're telling me that we're letting them in and we're paying for flights? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're killing American citizens. People, you know, they've gone on to kill people. Wow. I mean, I've sat at the, and I have pictures, and I'll send it to you. Wow. I took a picture at the hospital. The guy had a 13 on his hand. We're paying for his hospital bill. So if you're crossing now, and you fall off the fence, and you break your, like, I think this guy broke his leg. I don't want to go into the hip about it, but he, he was in the hospital for days. They're getting surgeries on the taxpayer dime, and then we're releasing him from the hospital. He was a gang member? I got the, yeah, he got the 13 on his, oh on his hand. Oh, my God. And Yo, 13. We got American citizens here that need help medically. And again, for no, free? forget that. What about the kids? Because uh, I've been thinking about this. What about the kids that seen? You know, they were like a little bit older than us, and they were like uh, eighteen around nine eleven, and whatever you want to feel about the war, they rose their hand. And they went to war for this country, bro. They come yeah. back, they can't get nothing now. They're homeless. They don't get medic. They don't get any medical. And um, what about the kids that died over there? Yeah. Mm. What I, whatever you feel about the war, they went. They were 19, 18, 20, 21 years old. They went and died on a foreign land, never to see their parents again. Yeah. Mm. And now we're bringing people in and just giving them stuff for free. You're right. We should be giving those families the money, bro. Yeah. Dude, this and then, is and then people crazy. are scared to speak out. It's like, well, if you're scared to speak out, then I understand you got a mortgage and you get a family, but it's like, at what point? My po this is my whole thing. What, what point do you? What when do you speak out? When it's too late, right? Or it's easy. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, dude. I didn't even know this was going on. Where and we're getting like, flights, NTORs. That's like the most. No oh, they get to flights. fight to even like they, they would never. Out they're, they're getting flown around. They're not coming with thousands of dollars fuck. paying for their own plane ticket. Well, they they okay. The government isn't getting on flights. Going through the NGOs, brother. Oh, uh, okay. Non-governmental organizations. Okay. It's not a border patrol flight. But okay. essentially, it's we're giving those NGOs money. Those NGOs are using. Uh oh. So it's not border patrol giving them flights. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's the NGOs, which okay. is they're still getting a free flight. Well, they're still getting free flights. From these NGOs, where do they get their money? Uh -huh. Grants from the government. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. It, did you have and then there's that? trucking no, no, then no. there's trucking company like uh, bus companies. Like, dude, like this is like a whole operation. Then they're in tents. Then they get them in like sand like they, they have like staging operations for them for them to stay and stuff. And then there's like cops that are getting paid on the on the dole to like guard the area. Then they're not reporting the crimes. In New York City, Midtown, there's seventy five percent of all arrests were Basically, NTAORs, people that we that we encounter. <laughs> yeah. You, okay. You guys' heads are buried in the sand. You guys yeah. are gonna start reading the papers. So, so uh, um, that's 60 crazy. Sixty percent of the arrests in Queens are NT, uh, people that we let into the country. Sixty percent of all arrests in Queens. Damn. And that's why you guys got a younger audience. Like I, I like you guys. You, you know, with yeah, the cool yeah. dudes. I want like so. I want to like spread this to, like a, the youth. You know. No, what no, I mean? it's great. No, because uh, a lot of people don't know this. I mean, obviously, we see what the fuck is going on in Colorado. I guarantee a bunch of those people in are probably Chicago. NTAORs. Yeah, they were all yeah let in. The no respect. No respect, man. Wow. 
Bro, and then it's funny and it's a joke and you shouldn't speak Why? out. You, until it's your mother or your sister that was brutally raped and murdered. Exactly. Then it's, then it's not so funny anymore. So when did you, like, when did this really start happening? I know we're going to kind of keep this uh, apolitical from your perspective. Um, you oh, know, yeah. But when did you notice that this shift in immigration... They were, like, shifting it sector to sector. So, like, we were still doing some oh, yeah. ERs. So you said Eagle Pass. You saw a certain station starting to do it. Then, and then, then we would get mandated to go help, dude. So that's, an, that's the other beast of it. We'd go get mandated to go... You have to be away from your family. That's why guys on the nor northern border are upset. Like, I got sent to Yuma. You get mandated to go to another state. So now guys are losing their marriages over helping these people in the country. You better help these people in the country, and you better go live there. Your wife, don't worry about her and your kids. You, they need help getting NTAOs. So we're being forced to go to these tents to help people get in and do the paperwork yeah away from your family guys were going on uh 30 day rotation six months out of the year oh damn and so i seen it happening i got mandated so let me explain this audience as well so guys whenever there's a border crisis and this happens like clockwork every single time during a and i you can i know you're going to stay apolitical but i'll say it yeah. to the audience anytime there's democrat and there's fucking always a border crisis right and what's up happening when there's a border crisis is certain Border Patrol stations get overwhelmed with people coming in. We're talking thousands, lines go, like going for like a mile. So what ends up happening is they don't have enough people to deal with that. So they call Border Patrol agents from other sectors that aren't as busy, whether it's up north, maybe Florida, other stations that aren't like slammed, and they tell them, you guys got to come over to help us. So these agents come in and fly in, help out. And the thing is, is that the whole NTAOR thing that I explained to you guys, it's a very um, long file. It takes a lot of time to do an NTAOR. Right, because you got to get all this information on them and all this other shit. They've since streamlined it a bit They've because they want to get these people in faster, which even okay. is more upsetting. They're okay. cutting corners to get people in the country. Wow. Not to cut you off. No, 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 no. Okay, role, no, I'm glad, no, I'm glad, no, I'm glad that you said that. So now, one of the most cumbersome ways to let somebody in that's typically reserved for special situations, they've now broadened it and given it to fucking criminals. And so, made the process quickly so you can snap them. So, and we actually started a whole new branch called Border Patrol Processing Coordinators, where you're not a... Border Patrol agent, you're a processor. You have access to a gun, but you help with remote. You don't really arrest. You do transport and files. Wow. And you basically, as the agent, you're just signing your name. If you're at a busy station, just signing and having them sign. They're setting the file up for you. Wow. We then created a whole new job around this. Wow. Just to get people in. That's like the... Um... Not, you know, that, I can't say why they did it, but I mean, when you two plus two equals four, 100% of the time. Crazy. It makes sense. What's that position under the, the uh, doctor? That's kind of like a fill-in. Oh, physician's assistant. S same yeah. thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. You could say it's a yeah, it's yeah, a functional yeah. equivalent. So spot on, Damn, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so spot on. Yeah, because the, the, this position didn't exist when I was in. Because we were ERing everybody. Get the fuck out of here. So you said some quick master two plus two equals four. So we got NGOs funding these operations. We got streamlined development of people pushing the country. The question is why? Uh, no, no, I, I really, I want to get out of uniform for that, but no, no. Okay, yeah. Can you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry if it's boring for the audience. Can you yeah. repeat that one more time? Yeah. I had something to say. So we got okay. literally NGOs that are funded supporting this process. Then we have as well people that are not even fully border patrol agents helping this process become even faster to push them into country. No, let me stop you, Coke, because it's exactly, but now we're letting them in, right? Now they're in New York. They're not honoring the detainers, brother. Okay. This is another so now the NPO, they're, yeah. they're beating up cops in New York City. Then they're letting them out of jail. They're not calling ICE to go grab them, to remove them. I'll explain this in a second. I'll let you so finish that, and I'll... Yeah, that clarify. guy is... We're letting NTO through the NGO. They're getting in the country. Then they're committing a, a pretty serious crime. They're not... The state and local, like NYPD, they're not calling. It's against the law to call. So now this guy's been into the country in like a quasi legal way, commits a crime. He like those cops that got beat up in New York, they I showed up at the jail, they weren't there. They fled, bro. So they're not even letting the feds know at the local level when these guys do commit a crime. That's even more insane, right? Or am I, am I, am I just out of my mind? No, um this Maybe has I been am, a problem sure. for a very long time. I can explain this cuz especially since ICE is yeah. So, okay. Once you come into the country, guys, right? And you've been processed, right? And it, 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 uh, Border Patrol gives you your, your NTAOR, uh, NTA notice to appear, right? Where you're going to go see an immigration judge in your local jurisdiction of wherever the fuck you're going to go. Let's say for hypothetical purposes with Zach's story, you say, I got family in New York. I want to go to New York. You're an illegal alien. You go to New York, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You commit a crime while you're in New York. I don't like this NYPD officer. You fucking punch him, right? You get arrested. Technically, since you've been arrested and you're an illegal alien, NYPD should put a detainer on you. Well, actually, excuse me. Immigration Customs Enforcement should put a detainer on you because they get a list of everyone that's arrested mm -hmm. and anyone that's an illegal alien, they put a detainer on them, right? 
it's the job of the local agency that arrested the illegal alien to hold that person so immigration can come get them. And remove them out of the country or put them in prison. Them. Yes. Yeah. So they go ahead. He goes into jail for punching a cop. They, they're supposed to give their manifest to immigration. Immigration looks at it. Okay, these guys are illegal. We're going to come pick them up tomorrow once they're released from the uh, court. Got it. What NYPD is doing, and this is common with a lot of law enforcement agencies, especially in sanctuary states or cities, they're not honoring the detainers. So the guy punches them, commits the crime. NYPD doesn't put a detainer because maybe the mayor tells them you can't. It's illegal. It's against Even policy. Even if it's a rape, dude. Yeah, it's against policy. So they don't hold the body or hold the prisoner for immigration to come get them. And then he goes back out on the street and he he's still getting up. government resources. And there's still veterans that are messed up in the head. They need counseling, they need housing, they need food. But this guy just committed a crime in here quasi legally on an NTAOR and this he's is a still very getting big problem. resources. Th this is with sanctuary cities. Yeah. There's a couple sanctuary cities. There's a lot of sanctuary cities in the United States New York, San Francisco, Austin, Texas. Boston, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. They just spent a billion in, in mass. Uh, the governor spent a billion. This is all public record. Spent a billion. They, and then uh, one of the political groups like, well, where'd that money go? They can't even get the answers where the billion went. And these are little kids getting raped. And, and you know, there's so much to it. And I want to get into it. But yeah, no, 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 no. I, I just wanted to chat. Does this all make sense? You guys give me ones in the chat. I know we've been throwing a lot of immigration lingo at you guys. This is like literally like an a class on the Immigration Nationality Act, INA. But. Uh, give me ones if this is making sense or two if you're if you're confused hit two and then tell us why specifically you might be confused But that's what a detainer is and that's what he's explaining Border Patrol lets them go they go to New York They commit a crime then the immigration officials because once they're in the United States it becomes ISIS problem It's no longer Border Patrol's problem. Yeah, because now they're in the interior and The law enforcement agencies when they arrest these illegal aliens are not honoring immigration detainers So that these people can be removed so it's a double whammy. They come in illegally, they commit crimes. They, they get flown they... in, all the money, all the whole time, and they're still on the dole. They're still on the dole. This is scary, bro. Yeah. Very scary. Overwhelming ones. Awesome. Cool, cool. Most people are getting where we're going here. Yeah, guys, I, like I said, we're using a lot of acronyms, but I'm trying to really explain this because I really want the American public to know what the fuck is going on you're here. You're doing this a phenomenal scary. job, bro. You're doing a great job. Wow. I That's mean, why I wanted to sit down with you because you're ex-HSI. Stuff that I can't explain, you can really put it out there because I wasn't, you know, I'm not a Harvard graduate kid by any but means. But this is, this is scary what you're telling me because, like, dude, yeah, when I was in, none of this was going on. Everybody's getting ER. I signed no one's to, getting NCAAs. I signed up to remove people, not assist them into the country so they can com go, go commit crimes and take away resources. Yeah. Because, you know what I'm thinking? <sighs> Fucking Let's crazy. Let's say dude. I'm a master criminal. Yeah. And I see people come work for me. They get arrested. They go to jail for a long time. But now, with this new system, I can just find some aliens that are not from the country, hide and work for me, do crime, and then they'll be out in two days, a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking like evil, evil genius, bro. Like, well, that's you, crazy. You can then bring them in and you can, you can basically force them to do sex work, dude. You can be a pimp, brother. I mean, it's not hard. To, why do you think there's so much trafficking? They remember, keep well, in mind, they didn't document those kids at, at all. They're trafficking little babies, bro. I mean, that's what's going on, bro. And there's, you can't go find them. Um, so what you just said, but imagine with the sex work. Forget, like, going to rob people. They're doing that on their own. But I'm a grown man, right? Like, I'm a little hefty. I'm a little big around the tummy. But I'm a grown dude. I could go grab 10, 15, uh, 13 year old girls, and now I have my own brothel, bro. They can't find these and those little kids girls. aren't documented, so they, that's they what can makes just pay it worse. for them. Yeah, because they don't have no bio data. Yeah, they show up to these addresses and they're not there. Wow. But no one's speaking out. But I'm forced to be the one to speak out, and it's not really a clout thing. I, if it was up to me, I would just be removing people in Arizona. You guys would never see my ugly face, bro. I'd be down there working, earning a living, doing the right thing. Mm. So let me ask you this: So if you, is there like pushback if you like catch people and you're like, no, I want to ER this yeah, guy's a criminal? Of what do they tell you at the? They just want it done, and they want it done fast. They used to brag about how many files we got done per shift. I'm like, why are we bragging about the files? Let's go as slow as possible. Let's clog this up immediately. Yeah. Mm. Why, why, as my supervisor, why do you want me to do more files? What does that entail? So they want to get more people in. Yeah, of course. Because well, well, then they have, like, you can only hold people for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And you're talking, about you're talking about a lot of people, bro. Yeah. So they're not even, and like, because like, it used to be, how many ERs did we do? That's not the flex anymore. No, no, the flex it's how is many people come in. How many people we owe are? How many little kids do we owe are? How many family units well, FMUs? What's the reason? And then, oh, uh, yeah, that's for you. Yeah, and like, okay. and then yeah. the other thing. No, no, talk about it, bro. I'm not here to stop you. But the other thing, wow. what about all the agent suicides, bro? Why do you think dudes are doming themselves? We're one of the highest rated suicides, man. Your whole entire. What if you're a 15 year agent? You took the vax because they told you to. You just like whatever. Yeah. And now you've seen 15 years of work get the get the, the get overturned in like six months. 
Think about all the people that you've caught over the past 15 years. You just saw that all go away. You let in more people in your career than you actually caught. Yeah. Wow. Then they're like, my whole life's a lie. I gave everything. I was divorced. My life left me. I was on a man, you know, what do you have to live for anymore? I mean, you know, it should, your job shouldn't be your life, but how is it not weigh on you, bro? And you can't say nothing or you lose your job. Have a lot of guys resigned because of the, these no, new no, mandates I mean, the, what's the economy out there? I see the chat. They tell me I'm going to be an Uber driver or whatever. My father drives a cab. I mean, dude, not a lot of guys want to resign. They want to keep getting money. Of course. To yeah. me, yeah. listen, and everyone has their plan and everyone's their own man. I'm not going to sit here and judge. I, I, I don't have a, I have a glass house, bro. But it's cowardly. Let's call it for what it is. I'm here. It's cowardly mm. to at least not speak up. And I, it took me three and a half years. It took me a big platform to do it. But I don't know. I'd like you guys' opinion. Do you yeah. think it's cowardly? Do you think it's no? Um, what's your like? I mean, me and you talked about this before. Do you think it's like a club thing for me? Like, what? I, it's tough because you got to really reconcile this in your brain, bro. And then I got to go and go back to work and see what they're gonna do to me. Yeah. And it's it's um, you know, I got a family. My you know, my family they're scared, bro. People are scared of the government. These yeah. are the big boys. You're not you're not talking about small peanuts here. So I mean, trust me, I I know what you're. We're looking at you know Border Patrol Internal Affairs. We're looking at Office of Inspector General. I know how much you're putting in. Like that's why me and you spoke before. I said, are you sure you want to do this? Because I already knew what was going to come. Yeah, I got being right a with whistleblower. My, and I'm not here to push it, but I got right with my God, brother. Yeah, that's the one I got right with my creative, bro. Yeah, I said let's do it for the kids, man. Yeah, and I'm not even the guy that should be talking about this. There's a bunch of ages we talk about it all the time. They're smarter than me. They talk without an accent. They went to better school, whatever. But it's like, yo, I got to do what I got to do. I got to step up. Yeah, right. I, I mean, yeah. I, no, think, I think I think at this point, it's mind blowing. Yeah, because bro, I don't know how many people will actually do this willingly, and that's bravery. But I will say though, is um, you should go on a different podcast too as well. Talk yeah. about this. Like, yeah, no, no, I want you guys to help. I yeah, want you guys to help platform. me too. I want yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. to help me and like keep an eye out. on me, brother. Yeah. yeah. Keep. What if they? You know. What if? Whatever the consequences, I still got a family. I need to be able to reach out to somebody to like yeah. keep the story out in the and public. We will, and we will. We absolutely. I, will. I don't know, man. It's like it's a it's a catch twenty two, bro. Like, do you do it? Do you not? But I just I wait on me, bro. It's like the taste in your mouth. Like you don't have no no flavor no more. Like you're going through life. Before I was catching people, returning them. It's what you signed up and expected. Now you come home to your girl and you're just like, we let another X, Y, Z in. Like I told you about that NTAR because these NTAR guys that are getting, they're committing crimes, and we're not charging them for those crimes. So they're like, they're getting. Tell the story that you told me before with the drug trafficker. So go ahead. yeah, and then can you remind me about the child endangerment stuff? Yeah, sure. I'll write okay. that down. I 